Inside Michigan Basketball is presented by Meyer. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Inside Michigan Basketball. You know, one of the most noteworthy stats going into the Michigan-Michigan State game Saturday, not one person on Michigan's freshman or sophomore classes had played in East Lansing in front of fans. So win or lose, we knew this was going to be a learning experience. And like all real-life learning experiences, they're not always comfortable, but they're necessary. Let's get right at it. Early first, Michigan pressures the ball. Hunter Dickinson comes away with it and finds Caleb Houston for the layup. Great work in the half-court offense on this trip. Give to Brooks, feed it inside Diabate, goes up for a two-hand crunch. Nice find from Brooks, and Michigan's up 10-8. Diabate with 11 points and nine boards. Then off the inbound, Devante Jones hooks up with Brooks. Michigan getting to the rim with regularity, part of an eight-nothing run. Max Christie with an answer for MSU, makes the three and gets fouled. Christie led the Spartans with 16. Michigan State likes to push the pace and that's what they do here. Malik Hall makes the steal and is gonna take it all the way for the layup. 11 of his 15 came in the first half. Likewise, defense to offense for Michigan. Jones steps in front of a pass and takes it the distance. He had his pass intercepted by Jones. Up ahead, Devontae, he'll lay it up. No, yes, it somehow crawled down and won. Michigan down four at halftime. MSU starts the second half with a 14-3 run. A.J. Holgard, the ball fake and the bucket. The Spartan bench outscored Michigan's 33-6. Caleb Houston helped slow the momentum for a moment. Three of his 11 here, but Michigan struggled from deep. More on that coming up later. Dickinson carrying the load offensively. Eli Brooks finds him on the backdoor cut. And then the ultra quick spin move on the baseline for the and one. Hunter with a game high 25. But Michigan State put this one away with another flurry. Joey Hauser right side three to make it a 19 point lead. 83-67 the final. The Wolverines shooting just 37% in the defeat. I think the first half we came out there um, with a lot of intensity. Um, you know, we were all playing together. We were sharing the ball. Um, everybody was, you know, playing their role. And I think, um, you know, we showed, you know, a glimpse of what we, you know, are capable of. But we just didn't sustain it for a full 40 minutes. Um, we just had, you know, a couple of lapses um, in, you know, crucial moments that, you know, hurt us a lot. What flipped in the second half there when they kind of caught fire and you guys were kind of unable to douse them? Yeah, I think it was just, you know, being unable, being unable to, you know, put out that flame. Um, that, you know, they were kind of, you know, hitting a lot of threes, getting a lot of fast break points that, you know, we weren't able to, you know, kind of stop. And so for us, uh, we got to just, you know, try to continue to win defensively and not try to win offensively. They out physical us. Um, really, they were real physical um, the second half. Um, we ain't doing a, a, job, a good job enough of um, responding. And that was a problem, especially um, with being known as a team of being um, kind of not as high of an energy guy, a, a team in the second half. And um, yeah, really, that's, that's just what happened. They, they had more energy. They came into it to just hit us, and we didn't answer back. This whole season, we've been struggling with the second half. Um, start with the, uh, the starting group, you know, me, Hunter, Eli, you know, Moose, and um, Caleb. You know, we got to take um, ownership of that, uh, especially me, myself, being a part of this team. I got to be more assertive with um, getting the injury from the guys. So that's something we got to work on on Tuesday. Um, we definitely going to imp- improve on that. Any loss is a loss. I feel like you didn't win the game. Um, you know, we're going to take it. We're going to learn from it. Um, we're going to go out there again on Tuesday, get a win, um, and just get better from it. You know, you got to learn how to lose before you learn how to win. I think that's the quote. And so um, for us, you know, we're going to come back, obviously watching film on this game, uh, take away mm-hmm. any learning um, or teaching moments from it, and then forget about it and try to move on to our next opponent, Nebraska. Today's conversation with Jawan Howard is brought to you by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. Coach, it was a back and forth game in that first half. What'd you see in that second half as Michigan State pulled away? Oh, I saw the Michigan State came out as the, the more aggressive team uh, with their uh, their energy, their effort, uh, the tenacity on how they attacked the basket, uh, being disruptive on the defensive end, some of the turnovers that they created, um, as well as the, some of the offensive rebound that led to uh, either three point field goals or two point field goals for them. 
Yeah, their transition seemed to really open things up. How did that allow that offense to get going? Well, I mean, when you get some easy ones in transition, of course, it feeds more life into your team. It feeds more confidence as well as the crowd getting into it. But, you know, we had letdowns in the second half that really hurt us. Um, and that came from missed shots uh, that led to some of their transition where we didn't sprint back, uh, whether we missed communication or guys ran passes for a layup or dunk or a guy got a three-pointer. And that right there can happen. So that let me know that fatigue definitely settled in on us in the second half, which at that time was the worst time to have fatigue because all it did is just ignited their team and their crowd. Hunter Dickinson, 25 points. Seemed like he was trying to will this team to stay in it. What did you see from him here today? He played well. He played well. Um, but, you know, like all, they, can, they all can do better. And it's more than just points, you know, defensively. Uh, and it, a lot has to do with him, too, uh, getting back, um, talking, miscommunication on ball screens, you know, some, some of those things. I don't give a damn about how many points he scored. I care about the defensive end on things that we can fix. All right, Coach, thank you. Yes. Ryan and I will have more on the MSU game later in the show. But when we return, the deep dive on a pair of wins from earlier in the week. Inside Michigan basketball is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. The Wolverines started their week with a key road win at Indiana. Hunter Dickinson led the charge with 25 points on 9 of 12 from the floor. Michigan shot a season best from the three-point line, hitting on 11 of 17. Brooks around the rainbow, Houston left corner. A rainmaker is pure, and Michigan's up by nine. Dynamite ball movement from the maize and blue. Houston popped in a career-best 19 on the strength of five three-pointers. And you gotta love when the bench comes through. Terrence Williams II entered the game with confidence, putting 10 in the score sheet. IU went on a run in the second half to get within nine, but Dickinson helped thwart the comeback effort. Works left elbow, finds Dickinson, right wing. He'll trigger a three, knocks it down, right between the eyes of that Indiana student section. Wolverines back up a dozen. Hunter tied a career high with a trio from the long line. Michigan with an emphatic win in Bloomington, 80 to 62. Welcome back to the show. That Indiana game sure felt good, and so did Wednesday's game against Northwestern. It was Michigan's pink game, coaches versus cancer, and the Wolverines used a colorful ending to knock off the Wildcats. Michigan picked up its fifth straight win over Northwestern, but it was far from easy. Caleb Houston continues to have a hot hand. Near corner for three off the dish from Hunter Dickinson. Dickinson working the low post. The southpaw changes it up with the righty hook, but he was limited due to foul trouble. Northwestern's Ryan Young had a big first half. 10 of his 13 came in the first frame. The Wildcats grabbing their first lead at 17-16. Grand Rapids freshman Kobe Bufkin only scored one bucket, but it was a beauty in transition. Up ahead to Bufkin, who's able to lay it in low on the left, and Michigan's up three. Late in the half, Devontae Jones drives right side and finishes with a scoop. Michigan up three, halfway home. Early second half, Eli Brooks scored six points in about 10 seconds. Here's Brooks for a three, and it's good. Eli Brooks taking advantage of that good ball movement, and then steals a pass from Bowie, goes up strong, lay it in. Eli finished with a dozen. Michigan built an 11-point bulge, but Northwestern goes on a 22-5 run. With the shot clock expiring, this three from Ryan Greer gives the Cats a 56-55 lead. They closed that big stretch with a 9-0 spurt and took a seven-point advantage with five minutes left. 3.20 to play, Michigan big man teaming up. Feed it in Dickinson underneath for Diabate who stuffs with two hands and ties the game at 62. Part of a 7-0 answer, Diabate and Dickinson though would both follow out. Michigan's bench made crucial contributions to bring this one home. Terrence Williams the second lets it fly and puts them back on top with 2.08 to play. Then with 138 on the clock, this was gigantic. Extra feed right corner, Houston for a three. That one goes! Houston on the mark again with a team I 18 on five of seven shooting. 
Michigan drilled eight threes and shot 56% for the game, holding on for a 72 to 70 win. Oh, this word right here, yes, sir. that was mean right there. That word just sums it up exactly what we're dealing with all right, throughout the season. And the ups and the downs, okay? That's a part of the game. So I think we grew up from this game right now. You know, and that's, of course, you know, the other games we played too, which I'm speaking of is Indiana and before Indiana. But this game right here, I just, you know, looking at, you know, when I told you guys in the timeout about, hey, what we were down five or seven? Seven. 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 We were down seven. I said what? Take a breath. <coughs> Take a breath. Take a breath. Okay? With that, we all have emotions going on right now in our head. <coughs> And one possession at a time. And all I kept hearing Hunt was saying, all we need is one stop. Mm -hmm. One stop. Okay? But everyone collectively <coughs> have grew up from this game right here, including me. All right? So I am just extremely proud how we mentally stayed locked in when we had those up and downs during the game. After the break, more on that MSU loss at the Breslin Center. Some of the mistakes we made. Time for our Elro Steel Man of the Week. Here's Brian Bush. When the Wolverines had success on Saturday in East Lansing, it largely flowed through their big man, Hunter Dickinson. Dickinson led everybody with 25 points, his fourth game of 21 or more over the last five. He got to the free throw line 10 times and corralled six boards as well. Dickinson has been surging as of late, and he kept the Wolverines in it with 25 of their 67 points. Brian joins us now to talk about the game against MSU on Saturday. Brian, first let's talk about the good. A good first half going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a tremendous basketball team. Yeah, for 20 minutes, Michigan was right in this thing. Seven ties, seven lead changes. They had a lot of success through Hunter Dickinson and Musa Diabate on the interior. But as we've talked about a lot this season, to win in the Big Ten, to win at a high level, you have to play for 40 minutes. Michigan only really delivered 20. And defensively, Michigan State put up 44 points in the second half. What did you see defensively from Michigan that kind of led to that outcome? To me, I think it was issues in transition. A lot of times when Michigan State found their way to some open looks, especially from three where they shot 50% in this game, it came in transition early in the shot clock. Michigan State's lethal in that area, and they took advantage. Offensively, the Wolverines struggled from deep, just three from 19, but something within that context that kind of jumped out to me, Caleb Houston, who's been so hot lately, only had three attempts from deep. Yeah, and Michigan, a lot of those as of late for Houston have been inside out with Hunter or Musa finding him. And unfortunately, Michigan State did a pretty good job of shutting that off, of taking Caleb out of this ball game as best as they could. He's critical to this ball club because he's one of the few who can really light it up from deep, and Michigan State didn't allow it. Let's talk now moving forward. I think most people coming into this game would think, if you get this one, great. If you don't, it's not the end of the world, so to speak. Where does this team go after this experience in this hostile environment? Yeah, it's been interesting, these road environments. This was the first time Michigan, I think, had a sustained stretch of, of just not their best basketball. Even at Illinois a couple of weeks ago, they were shorthanded. There was a reason why they couldn't pull that one off, and then we saw what they did at Indiana. There's a lot to learn from really both games this week, but in particular here on Saturday, they've got to find a way to put 40 minutes together, especially in hostile environments. All right, Brian, thanks for the time. You got it. This week's time machine drops us down on February 1st, 2012. The Wolverines sprinted out to a 27 to eight lead on number 20, Indiana, on their way to a 68-56 win. Freshman guard Trey Burke led the Mason Blue with 18 points. The Hoosiers trimmed the lead to two at one point, but a pair of clutch three-pointers helped seal the victory. That win helped them improve to 13 and 0 at Chrysler on the season. Thursday, the women traveled to Columbus and stuck another W in their backpacks. The seventh-ranked Wolverines blasted number 22 Ohio State 77-58. Nas Hillman cradled 12 rebounds to become the school's all-time leader with 935. She also paced four players in double-digit scoring with a game-high 20. Michigan swept a season series from the Buckeyes for the first time since 2011. The Wolverines kick-started the week Monday with a home tilt against Purdue. 
Hillman scored 10 of the club's first 12 points on her way to the seventh 30-point effort of her career. She finished with 32 and 12 boards. Emily Kaiser flirted with a triple-double, 12 points, 12 rebounds, and seven helpers. The final from Chrysler, 79-66. Here's Sarah Van Meter with more on the Wolverines. The seventh-ranked Wolverines have won six straight, with their average margin of victory topping 23 points per game during the streak. And guess what? Michigan is back at Chrysler for two of their next three games. And it's really easy to have fun when you're playing well, but I, we don't play perfect. And I think that's important, too. Like, we all kind of come together and just we play for each other. I never really thought I'd say, hey, I like playing defense, but um, I think that just the way we can scramble and rotate and play together, um, I think it's really special and it's just a lot of fun for sure. Nobody cares about the credit or who's scoring what or getting what accolades or anything in between. Um, on any given night, somebody can be our leading scorer and we're okay with that. We find a hot hand. Now comes the showdown with sixth ring Indiana Monday night at home. Michigan lost to IU 70-65 last season in Bloomington. Fans saw 17 lead changes, with Hillman recording her 10th double-double of the season. Going into every game, we suspect there's be, there'll be adversity, whether you know we were thinking we won't hit shots or somebody's going to come out firing or you know we were away. So we don't ever put ourselves in a mindset where we think that we're going to just walk into a game and that's all we have to do is show up. Having that home advantage and having those fans would really, really help us and just know that like their support of it is, be is behind us. Um, but in the same sense, we don't we don't want people to start hopping on the bandwagon now. We've been doing this all year, so you know it would be great to have people. But if not, you know we're still going to do our thing. Tip off is set for seven o'clock here Monday night, with first place in the Big Ten on the line. We'll have highlights on next week's Inside Michigan basketball. Next up on this week's show, Devonte Jones settling in with his maize and blue teammates. Stick with us through the break. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. Hi again, everybody. Devonte Jones joined the team in the offseason as a grad transfer, hoping to have a similar impact on the program as Mike Smith did the year before. When you break it down, the two have remarkably similar stats. Devonte talked to us about his transition to the maize and blue. When asked about his experience so far with the Wolverines, the Louisiana native called everything amazing. And just having a great group of guys around me, you know, great coaching staff, um, everything just amazing. I love, the, I love the culture, everything about it. You know, they push you, you know, 100%. You know, they're pushing everybody from one to the last person on the bench. So um, it's a real big family. You know, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I feel, I feel like I made the best decision. I feel like I made a great decision. A great decision, but Jones made it clear it wasn't the easiest transition to orchestrate. I mean, it's something I knew I had to do, you know, to get where I wanted to be. So me coming in, playing for a guy like Jawan Howard, you know, it just who wouldn't want to do that? And having, you know, the keys, you know, right away. So I worked, I worked hard to get here. You know, in the summer, I put a lot of work in. Once I got on campus, um, I stayed in contact with all my teammates. You know, just making sure, you know, I was up to speed with everything. Everything included a heavy dose of film work. He dedicated himself to knowing everyone's position on the court. But this season has not been without its hiccups. He's heard and read the criticism, mostly on social media, which he says he hasn't been on, quote, in a minute. Whenever I was on social media, you know, I see like comments like saying, you no, know, just negative towards me. And it's like, OK, I see like what it so it's like me seeing that I was just I just been motivated like more than ever. You know, um, they actually put me back in a good place. I really need to see all that. So now it's like whenever I feel like, you no, know, I ain't got no injury, nothing, I just you know keep them thoughts. And comments in the back of my head and they just motivate me to keep going and get better each and every day. Devante is a thinker and though already extremely confident when he arrived, he says his teammates have enhanced that part of his game. Lately I've been a lot more showing my emotions more. Um, I've been talking a lot more to my teammates. Everything's just hitting stride like right on time. Um, we coming in I knew we were going to have some ups and downs. I obviously didn't think we would be on the losing streak that we was but um, I feel like God do everything for a reason so every guy from top to bottom, I feel like all those guys are great players. So just being around them, it just really just built my confidence up even more, knowing that I got people around me that can create for themselves and others. Devante is one of the most poised and polished young men you'll ever want to meet. And we certainly look forward to seeing how he and the Wolverines fare the rest of the season. That's our show for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Inside Michigan Basketball.